Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Glitter and Lasers. Have a complete meltdown because someone said something nice to her while she was lumbering along, jogging, running. Um, yes, I'm being a dick about it. I want to do this video as a catch up and probably wrap up. I hope. I hope Anna's not still going on about this because she's not going to win this. It's just. It's just not going to work for her. Um, so if, if you're listening, Anna, stop, stop. Um, but I want to, what I want to do is watch all of these videos in sequence, um, because I caught the first half of this through the cynical dude and I recorded the, th the last half of it on my phone, the last half of it as of right this second when I'm recording. But I miss the in between. I think there were two videos in between where she talks about how she encountered the woman a second time on the trail. Or maybe there's only one video. Either way, my point is I want to watch everything in order. And I want to talk about things in order because now that I have seen the beginning and the resolution, we know we, the royal we, know that this is a made up story. Maybe somewhere in Anna's head. She imagined this sort of an encounter occurring and what she would do if that happened to her. And you know how you do that? You know, like you have like a scenario that you play out in your head. I think that's more what happened here. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody was actually running on the same trail that she was on and waved at her and said, good job or nice day or, you know, whatever you say to each other when you're running on the trails it has been mentioned in my comments sections on the other two videos that i've done on this about how in running culture and i'm sure most like little niche cultures like that you know like hiking culture or driving culture or jeep life you know that kind of stuff that there's like you see another runner on the trail and you wave you say hi or kind of give the high sign or whatever you're you're not a dick to them basically kind of a thing um, and if you see somebody that you're, you've seen more than one time, you might go the extra mile and say, lovely day or nice weather. Or, hey, how's it going? You know, probably not that that'll start a conversation. But the point is, is that there's a certain level of interaction between runners who are long-term regular runners, especially when they're on something like a very popular running trail, which Anna kind of alludes to doing and also being out there every day as of course we know anna is a svelte running queen and never misses run day so she's already been out there a million times this year so why didn't she recognize this woman is kind of my thing like this she later on in the story it kind of comes out that this woman assuming she's real has run on this trail frequently enough that they're there on multiple occasions. And so why doesn't Anna recognize this person? She goes after this woman for not recognizing her. And it's like, well, why didn't you recognize the woman? If you're running every day, surely to God, you're recognizing people's faces at this point. There's got to be at least three people who are out there roughly the same time you are every day. Kind of a thing. Like, even if you're running at different times, if you're running on the same trail, you know, you're going to see the same people at some point. Anyway, um, so this is this is the first video that started it all. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. These videos are like a minute long, so this won't take us that long, I hope. I just stopped on my run to have a little cry in this beautiful area. And um, I'm crying for a silly reason. Somebody stopped me on the trail while I was walking, just doing my cool down. I was doing like intervals today, so like I walk in between. I just want to point out before we get further that she does say I'm crying for a silly reason. So even she at the beginning of this video acknowledges that this is an unreasonable reason to be crying or at least not something that someone who wasn't already an emotional wreck would be crying over. And she's like, good job getting out there. And it's good job getting out there. That fake Midwestern accent she uses when she does this shit just irritates me. Just felt so dehumanizing. Okay. I don't know. 
I, I kind of lean both ways on this. This part of the interaction may have actually happened. Anna is a delicate flower. She is set off by the most ridiculous stuff into crying fits, as has been pointed out with the whole um, happiness retreat she went to. She, she cried because she couldn't fit at the table. Uh, she cried because the chef told her her tarts were ugly because her tarts were ugly. Um, she, she cried because she couldn't find clothes in Spain. She she cries about everything. Like, I'm I'm positive there's at least five more incidences that I can't come up with. She almost cried in Target because she didn't fit in any of the junior section clothes. I'm not joking. Anna and Anna made a mention of in the newly video that I promise I will eventually get edited and posted that um she is has been having a rough few weeks and she kind of sort of mentions it again here. So she's already primed for an emotional break and I don't know maybe this woman really did say good job getting out there and just kept going because that's how this story begins okay even anna says and it just felt so dehumanizing thereby insinuating that the conversation ended there things to keep in mind for later it felt so shitty and i just am having a bad day anyway i came out here to run to try to feel better and i know this person was well-intentioned but man Another major point to keep in mind here is Anna just says, I know this person was well-intentioned. Okay? So she's already said, I know it's a silly reason to be crying. I know this person is well-intentioned. And yet still says that the woman's, the woman's comment was dehumanizing, which words mean things. So I need people to quit repeating shit they heard on TikTok unless they understand why the term is used there's no gaslighting there's no dehumanization going on here but it felt shitty it felt really bad i already know i'm gonna get okay it's not this woman's fault that anna decided to take the comment out of context and decided that that was the comment that was going to set her off and make her feel bad about herself the woman by anna's own words was not intending to do that it was an encouragement encountered on the uh, during the run that anna decided was the end of the world and that she needed to go cry about it a lot of people have mentioned in my comments section that the reason that this particular comment just crushed her is because anna has been really trying to shift her image to this fitness and health fat acceptance health at every size guru so she's she's trying desperately to continue this idea that morbidly obese people are just as healthy and just as physically active and just as um capable as non-morbidly obese people which is categorically wrong unfortunately but anna is determined that she is going to be the poster child for this she is willing to put her body on the line to prove this point and so in other people have mentioned that in anna's head she's already this fitness goddess like she's already a marathon runner she's already perfect her form is great there's nothing to improve anna is perfect and why why this a a perfectly well-intentioned woman runs by and says good job getting out there god only knows how she actually said it because i'm pretty sure she didn't go good job getting out there because she's in texas for one it would have sounded more like good job getting out there joking i'm joking i'm joking anyway my point is the reason why that hit anna so hard is because the reality of the situation is anna isn't in good shape and her running form is terrible and we know this because we can see the videos that she puts out her most recent video where she's doing squats she's she's showing like the phases of squatting where she starts with a chair squat and she goes into a, a goblet squat 
the comment section there is just person after person after person going, your form is wrong. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't do it this way. You're going to hurt yourself. Your form is poor. You're going to hurt yourself. Like I, all of the comments with the exception of a handful were people telling her and some of them begging her to improve her form because she's going to hurt herself. And but Anna doesn't believe that. Anna believes that she is perfect. And so to have someone go running by, who I'm sure was in better shape, probably running at a lot easier pace than Anna was, probably just someone who's actually a runner, who's actually out there every day, to have someone who is is what Anna thinks she is in her own head run past Anna and shout words of encouragement to her, like, why would Anna need encouragement if she's already perfect? It's just that slap of reality just hit her so hard that it it punched a hole in her identity. And this is what happens when you crumble people's identities. Any of us will do this. Any of us can have a moment where we'll just crumble if someone puts a big enough hole in our self-identity. And that's what's happened here. Anna has this weird ass self-identity that she's some kind of fitness guru and she's just as healthy and as fit and as sexy and as hot as everyone else. She's done a lot of videos where she's dancing around in her underwear lately and I don't need to see them anymore. But that's kind of the point. To have someone who is actually probably in good shape go running by, shouting a word of encouragement to her, her a morbidly obese woman who is struggling to shuffle down the running path, let alone run. She probably thought she was doing Anna a favor, giving her some pep talk while she keeps running, and Anna just kerplots because she doesn't need encouragement, you guys. She's already perfect. Get a ton of DMs being like she's well intentioned, but you know what? I am about to start my period. I'm hormonal AF. None of this is that woman's fault. Like literally none of this is that woman's fault. And yet you're pushing all of the blame off onto her. And you yourself said the woman was well-intentioned. So all you're doing now is making excuses for your breakdown. These are still not the fault of the woman. And I'm going to be really honest here. That woman saw me and assumed that I was entirely out of shape. You have no idea. I mean, maybe she did. But you don't know that. You, you don't know that. You simply don't. You are assuming that the woman saw you and you know that you are morbidly obese and that you are out of shape and that your form is shit. You know that. Anna knows this about herself. And so Anna is assuming that this woman saw her struggling and that that woman then assumed that Anna wasn't a runner because Anna's not a runner and Anna knows that. Again, it's this weird slap of reality against Anna's very carefully crafted self-identity here. Been that it was my first day on the trail, and that's because she has. You run like it's your first day on the trail. Preconceived views of what a plus-size body is and is not able to do. Hang on. And as a person who's out here every shape, and that it was my first day on the trail, and that's because she has preconceived views of what a plus-size body is and is not able to do. Again. Anna has no flippin' clue what this woman was thinking. Maybe she was thinking that, but also maybe she was thinking, I've got two more miles to go before I'm done for the day. Anna just assumes that this woman is, is letting Anna's fatness live rent-free in her head because Anna's fatness lives rent-free in Anna's head. It's obviously front and center with Anna at all times. Her morbid obesity and her lack of physical ability is clearly something that she's constantly thinking about. And she should, in my opinion. But she just assumes that this woman, who was probably thinner, probably healthier than Anna, she just assumes that that's what this woman was thinking because that's what Anna was thinking. Anna thinks this about herself. That's what's happening here. We're getting a beautifully wide, crystal clear window into what Anna actually thinks about herself. She thinks she's out of shape. She thinks she's morbidly obese. She thinks she's physically not capable. She knows her form is shit. 
She knows this hurts her. She knows this isn't good for her to be trying to run at near 500, maybe, maybe closer to 600 pounds. I don't know how big Anna is. And that's part of the problem. I have to guess because I have no fucking clue how heavy Anna is. But I know she's heavier than the, whoever this woman was that went running past her. And even people who are in lighter, smaller bodies who, are, who have a lower weight still put damage on their, on their joints from the act of running. Like, I know people really enjoy running. I know you do. I know. You all tell me. I understand. It's not good for you. <laughs> long distance, long term running is actually not good for you. It damages your immune system. It damages your joints. It's very easy to get injured. You want to keep running, you knock yourselves out. I'm not going to do it for those reasons. Will I walk forever? Yes, because that's what we're built to do. My tirade aside, these are things that Anna thinks about herself and she is projecting them onto this woman. This woman who perfectly innocently ran past Anna and said, good job getting out there. You can clearly see it's probably not that great of a day. It's not sunny. It looks kind of cloudy. It sounds windy. It sounds like challenging weather. It sounds like a challenging weather environment. Maybe that's all this woman meant. Maybe she saw another runner on the road knowing that this was not the most, not the, the best running weather. And yet you're out here running anyway. And that's all she freaking meant was good job coming out in the nasty weather and continuing to run anyway. That has nothing to do with your obesity. But Anna has had this conversation in her head already. She has these preconceived notions of what someone who looks like that woman would say to her. And that's why I'm not positive this interaction happened. But if it did, Anna is totally projecting her own insecurities onto this woman and refuses to accept that, refuses to self-reflect, refuses to be like, I, I admit that this woman was well-intentioned. I admit that I'm crying for a silly reason. However, everything, every emotion I'm feeling, everything that's wrong with me right now, that's all that woman's fault. And as a person who's out here every freaking day trying to change that perspective, it's bullshit. Frustrating, but it's still so ingrained in our society. Okay, she says, as someone who is out here every freaking day trying to change that perception, again, she is a martyr, you guys. She is out here running in her morbidly obese body because she's trying to change the perspective that society has about other morbidly obese people. Because, you know, you see morbidly obese people jogging every day. I mean, it's, it's as common as seeing itty bitty skinny people running. It is just that common of a sight. Anyway. It doesn't matter how many miles I run. It doesn't matter how many times I'm on the trail. Someone's always going to stop me and treat me that way. And it sucks. Yeah, I think I've said everything I want to say about these videos. I want to jump to the next video. And I know on Instagram, I was talking about it and I was getting stories and reels mixed up. And I believe these are all stories. The stories vanish after 24 hours. The reels stick around. I hate the fact that Instagram has both of those. It annoys the crap out of me because I can't keep them straight. I'm pretty sure these are stories from her Instagram, which is why they're not on her account anymore. Personally, I think putting these types of videos up via a way that you know it's going to delete in 24 hours and not going the extra step to preserve them, which you can do. You can save them so that they don't delete from your account. They just leave your story feed after 24 hours. Anna didn't try to preserve these, which tells me that Anna didn't want these up more than 24 hours. It's it's not dirty deleting in the definition of dirty deleting, but it's effectively dirty deleting. She knows that these are not going to be popular videos or that she's going to get a lot of flack for them. So she puts them up in a format that she knows they're going to vanish in 24 hours so she can just kind of ignore it after a while. There's my argument for the dirty deleting thing. I still think it's basically dirty deleting. Okay. So the next set of videos are Anna getting back from driving home, I'm assuming, from the run that she just did and those two videos that she just posted. So she posted two more videos after that. 
again to her stories so that they would delete in 24 hours. So this, this is Anna reacting to some of the comments that she's already received off of those two videos. Because you can still comment on them. I think they go to your DMs. Something like that. I don't know. I don't have a lot of people comment on stuff. A, I don't post a lot of things. And B, I don't have a lot of people that comment on things. So I don't actually know how this shit works on Instagram. Even though I've been on there for a really long time. Anyway. So this is Anna responding to people responding to her video where she's crying about the woman giving her a compliment. I got home and somebody asked me like what what I preferred she had said or done. And I thought about this because I think it's important to share that there are ways. I would like to point out that Anna is crossing her apartment. She's she's walking across her apartment. You can clearly tell that she's either limping, which is possible, or she's got the Amberlynn waddle down because she can't fully take a step. And I I know I know she has more range of motion in her legs than Amber does because her lipedema L I P D M A hasn't gotten as bad as Amber's so so I'm guessing she's limping which means she's sore from running which means she's if she's limping it kind of insinuates that she's not doing it right ways to engage or interact with people on the trail and even cheer them on without making them feel less than so my favorite thing that people do on the trail all the time is just give me a smile. Honestly, that gives me a lot of energy and doesn't make me feel less than. I honest to God believe that if someone smiled at her on the trail, just judging by how poorly she took this woman's comments, if people smiled at her on the trail, she would probably take that as like, instead of being like a, hey, I acknowledge that you're a person on the trail. She probably takes it as like a, oh, look at you running on the trail. Aren't you adorable? Kind of a thing. I, I will put money on that. So I call bullshit on this. And it's easy. So I would say just give me a smile. Okay. Well, we will all alter our form of behavior to fit your desires because we should all be concerned about how Anna is going to react to something at any given moment the just the gall of this and the following video are just she's so oblivious to how these two videos come off or how they were going to come off where she's just like how dare you try to interact with me on the trail how dare you Kind of a situation but you don't know me how dare you talk to me kind of a thing it's basically what she says we'll watch i love it and honestly i would say there's no need for words don't talk to me there's no need for words why are you talking don't you know how to text i'm sorry unless you know who i am and you know my journey don't talk to me unless you know who I am and you're following all of my social media. Okay. Yeah. Do you want any other special treatment while we're at it? Then it's a little bit different, right? I had a guy sure. I fist bump me once and be like, I just think you're awesome and I love that you're sharing your story. Okay, I know where she goes now when she's making shit up. Again, it's not necessarily lying. It's just her deceptive zone. But she definitely goes there when she's making shit up. Let me see if I can back this up. Okay, where are we talking about? She is, that is her deceptive zone. It's one of her deceptive zones. This is her talking about the fist bump guy, though. So she's getting ready to start making the story up. Her eyes are shifting. So also she can no longer look at the camera because this is she's got to concentrate on the story that she's making up. So here we go. She's talking about the guy who came up to her and fist bumped her. Notice how her eyes are still fixed on that point because she's making this up. She can't her eye can't wander because that will engages different parts of your brain when you're telling a story. 
she's locked in because she's making the story up. See? And that was awesome because there was context that made it clear. I'm sure it was awesome if it had happened. She couldn't look back at the camera until she was done telling the story. And now she's back over there describing how awesome it would have felt if it had been real. So again, she's got to stay over there because she's got to concentrate on making the story up. Clear that this person knew who I was, understood what I was doing and what it took to get there. And that made it feel more sincere versus diminutive. What does that even mean? That's not... That's not how you use the word diminutive. But anyway, so this actually is the video that I wasn't able to see. This is the in-between um, the videos we just watched and the videos that I screen recorded and reacted to myself. So this is what I needed to see because just going off of Anna's recap of what happened, completely different than what this actual video is about. So let's watch this one. Y'all are not going to believe this. You're right. I don't. So, I'm walking on the trail, and I pass that lady again. One thing you gotta watch in this video in particular is Anna is over emoting. Uh, she's exaggerating what she says, what she does, her reactions. She's exaggerating all of it, um, and I think that's honestly because. She's trying to convince us that this really happened. It's kind of like Anna has said in her book and in her videos, various videos, that basically she just kind of fakes happiness because she's faking it till she makes it or, or the act of faking happiness makes you will make you happy kind of a thing. Um, but because of that, Anna is just constantly overacting. She's over smiling. She's overly giddy. She's screechingly happy at points and that's because she's just overdoing it the same thing's happening here this isn't real she wants us to believe it is and so she's over exaggeratingly faking it to make it seem real probably to the probably she does this because she's been doing the the faking thing for so long that she thinks this is what sincerity looks like and she doesn't have a gauge anymore so that's just me speculating, obviously. And she stops me. I don't even think she realizes she's already seen me. So she stops her. So this woman who's on the running trail, who is running, assumedly, has now stopped running in order to come over and stop Anna in order to engage her in a conversation. Keeping in mind, Anna's like, this person doesn't even recognize me. Anna is close to six feet tall. She's somewhere between five, seven and six feet. She is over. She's got to be 500 pounds. I'm sorry. She has to be close to that. You are not going to forget someone who looks like Anna, especially since a lot of times when she's running, she is wearing some bright ass color while she's running. You are not going to forget that you ran into that person a week ago. You may not know their name, you may not remember the conversation you had with them, but you will recognize them. So right here, bullshit. And she goes, okay, there's another thing here. Let's go back. This. Now she could be just looking out the window because she's clearly making this up. You can tell she's making it up just from the five mile stare and the way she's holding her. This is her holding her head up because this is a superior moment for her, but she's got her hand here and she's, she'll do this again with her hand later. A lot of times when you can't look at, keep in mind the the camera is acting as the audience. So the camera in this situation has replaced a person being there. The camera is acting as a person in this, in this instance. So Anna can't look at the camera because looking at the camera would be like looking at me, not me specifically, but if I were a human and I was in the car, she would not be able to look at me while she's telling the story because she's making it up. And then also she turns her head away and she's got her hand here where her mouth is. And this could be soothing. This could be soothing. 
But it also is one of those things where when we're telling, when some people lie, they cover their mouth. They're, they're covering their mouth because they're, they know what they're saying isn't true. And it's just like a reaction. Like when we don't, when we talk about things that we don't want to see, we like, we cover our eyes, even though we're not effectively blinding ourselves, even if it's just something kind of like this, it's still a blinding gesture. I don't want to look at you. I'm protecting my eyesight from you. I don't want to recall the thing that I saw. So it could be soothing, but it could also be, she knows she's lying and she's trying to cover her mouth up. Both waves and is like, good job. And I'm like, do I know you? See, here we're doing it again. And this is like a classic thinking pose as well, which also tells me that she's just making this shit up. And she goes, I, I don't think so. And I was like, well, you're acting like someone who knows me. Watch how aggressive she gets about this. Watch the amount of teeth that she exposes while doing this. And if you knew me, you'd know that I'm on this show all the time. So it's really like, do I know you? And she goes, I, right. I, I don't think so. And I was like, well, you're acting like someone who knows okay me and if all right watch what if you knew me you'd know that i'm on this show the we've got the snarl her nose is wrinkled up her eyebrows have come down she's got her teeth out they were snarling again we're still in the snarl not that, that was blatant this 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 what i'm showing you right now other than being like funny faces that's not the point. The point is that she's snarling at this, this, this conversation that she's having. Arr, she is pissed at this woman, this fantasy woman. And that's what's happening. There's so much teeth here. It's like anger aggression is what we're doing right here. We're angry. See how like, that's what's happening. But then there's like this moment. Fighting. Blank. She's just blank which the other thing to keep in mind or to, to notice when we were watching this is how much she's watching the viewfinder she's watching the viewfinder to make sure that she's making the right faces like you can tell i'm looking at the camera you can tell i'm looking at me on the computer screen that's because that's what i'm doing but like you know the difference between i'm looking at the audience i'm looking at me i'm making sure that I'm making the right face versus I'm just talking to you kind of a thing. And I'm also not doing like the intense, the intense eye contact, the unblinking, you guys, I'm totally serious eye contact. You know, it's, it's, you'll notice it when you see it because it's part of natural conversation. When you're talking to somebody, you're not staring them down. And if you are, maybe, maybe don't, but you're, you look at people, you look away, you look at people, you look away. You know, I want to hit the right button. So now you know. And then I just took off. This is where she starts to over emote and really overreact because she's trying to convince us that this happened, that this was a mic drop moment, and that she is like the coolest thing since sliced bread and warm butter. <laughs> Yeah, and see, did you notice how her eyes flickered? She had to flicker from here to there to back down again. She was double checking to see if she was doing it right. I am so petty, but in the most delightful way ever. Hey, if this really did happen, press X to doubt. Um, this is not delightful. It it is petty, I guess, except you weren't wronged, so. Since you weren't actually wronged, you're not being petty. You're just being bitchy for what this woman would see as being like no fucking reason. Like for her, this is coming out of left field. And you can be damn sure if she's a real person and you really did do this, she's never going to talk to you again because now you're that weirdo crazy lady on the trail that who knows what you might do. Maybe if you had a spork, you might try to stab her with it. Like, I wouldn't want anything to do with you. If after this interaction, if this interaction really happened, and it was me in this woman's shoes, and I saw Anna coming back down the trail, I would literally turn around and go the opposite direction. 
I would avoid her like the plague. So I don't know what Anna thinks she's proving here or what she thought she was accomplishing, but really all she's probably done is, if this woman was real, make her want to avoid Anna at all costs. Like, let's say later on down the road, Anna and her are at the grocery store. <laughs> And this woman sees Anna shopping for groceries and she's going to be like, nope, not today, Satan. And that's going to be the end of that. Oops. Well, you know, again, way over emoting. This is not a natural face. This is not a natural laugh. This is forced. And this is acting. And it's overacting. But anyway, back to this. You can be nice and a bad bitch. You weren't nice. And you weren't a bad bitch. You were mean and nasty. And I don't know what part of this made you look like a bad bitch. It just kind of made you look like someone who is not ready to be out in normal society. Now we're into the videos that I reacted to in the last video. And thankfully these are the last videos. As far as I know, I am going to check, but... Currently, these are the last videos in the whole trail running saga. This is, this, what we're about to watch, is Anna doubling down on the story, on her reaction, on why she was right to act the way that she did. Like, this, this is where anybody who did actually believe this story, this is where people start to really not believe this story because from this point forward Anna's not only rewriting the story but she's doing it in a way that makes her look like a victim like a hardcore targeted victim in this situation Anna much like Amber can only ever be the victim the hero or the know-it-all and those are the only that's the only way Anna can be perceived and so if Anna is in a situation where she's the bully, the one in the wrong, the reason she's upset, she has to re-script it in a way that puts her back into one of these three roles. And what she's going to try to do right now in these upcoming shorts is she's going to try, and they're not shorts, these upcoming stories is she's going to try to paint herself as a victim and then paint herself as a hero because she's reacting to this woman after this woman has made her a victim. Also, it's bullshit. If I don't see a lot of X's for doubting in the comments section, I'm going to need a really good explanation for why you still believe this story. I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I just really need you to sell me on it because I don't believe this. I woke up to a couple of people really disappointed to how I talked to the lady on the trail yesterday. Disappointed? Or disbelieving? And I realized not everybody watches my stories every day and I think- How dare? How dare? I do now. I don't want to, but if I don't, I'm gonna miss something. I think people missed last week's story where i ran into this woman the same exact woman and she said something like you know getting out there is the first step or something which is totally not what she said we literally just watched this so we know what she said originally something like this and and granted i go on the trail i've probably been on a hundred times this year okay look i know she's just being uh she's just exaggerating i know she hasn't been on the trail a hundred times this year y'all don't need to that's the only part of this that like irritates me. I'm like, I get it. She's making, she's, she's exaggerating. She doesn't literally mean that she's been on the trail a hundred times this year. Y'all don't need to do the math to prove that she would have had to have gone jogging 300 times or three times every day in order to be on the trail a hundred times. It's fine. It's a joke. And um, I didn't even say anything to her initially. That part I believe is still true. That's how short my memory is. And I don't even know if I told this part of the story or not, but she No, because you hadn't made it up yet. She just kept going. And she kept saying things that just implied that I was really out of shape. And then Was she, like, jogging along beside you 
and just shouting platitudes at you while you were running like and she wanted me to thank her for that and it was really really awkward i who does that like i know in like television series and and movies and things when they're trying to show that a character is truly insufferable or just that stuck up they'll be like they'll have a character who's like i paid you a compliment you should thank me for it Mwah. who does that in reality nobody so anna wants us to now believe that this super secret part of the story that she never mentioned before ever in all five of those videos is that what really happened at the beginning was this woman stopped Anna, paid her a quick compliment, and then proceeded to continue to say things that implied that Anna was out of shape and needed some kind of cheerleader and that Anna should be thanking this woman for stopping Anna and, and telling her good job for getting out there. Keep in mind, everything that Anna said in the first two videos about, well, the first one especially, no, the first two videos, about what this woman thought of Anna, all of that is Anna projecting onto this woman. Anna has no idea what this woman was thinking, assuming this woman was real. I suspect that this woman is just someone that Anna sees jogging around the same time that Anna goes jogging and for whatever reason Anna is jealous of this woman she maybe she's thinner maybe she's prettier maybe she's in better shape maybe she's actually a runner I don't know but I feel it comes off as this woman might be a real person like Anna may have a real person in her head when she's talking about this woman it comes off as Anna is jealous of this woman in some capacity and so Anna is projecting this not real scenario like oh if that person ever stopped and said something to me i would just x y and z like that's how this is coming off it's a not situation that anna has created in her head because she's jealous of this woman and this woman has never even said boo to her sorry i have three cats i have a lot of cat hair if anybody knows how to keep cat hair off the mic Thing, let me know I had had a really bad day and I burst out into tears and I was like full-on crying and I'm not a person that does this I've, I've already listed out all the times she's cried since I've started following her since the target video I didn't follow her before that not really like I knew she existed and I maybe watched a video or two but I hadn't started reacting yet I've already listed out five probably six or seven times that Anna has just started crying for various reasons. I've never had this type of interaction on the trail before. And people have said mm, weird things to me before. I don't doubt that. Okay. I don't doubt that that could happen. I know that people will drive down the road and shout stupid shit at people. I've had it happen to me. I have no idea what they're saying. Uh, for all I know, they're driving by and they're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing that ever lived while they drive by. But of course, they're driving by. So it's just. <laughs> I just assume. Um. But that kind of thing. So I, I know that happens in real life. So I don't doubt that Anna has been walking somewhere or trying to film somewhere and some jerk has driven by and shouted something obnoxious out the window. I don't doubt that at all. It happens to literally everyone for some stupid fucking reason. Okay. That's the only part of this story that I believe. And the fact that she didn't remember that interaction and approached me the exact same way. is. And here we are. Remember in the short video where she's unhinged and she says, I don't think that woman remembers that she's already talked to me. That was what she said in that video. Now she's saying the fact that that woman doesn't remember me. So it went from Anna assuming that the woman doesn't remember interacting with her to Anna knowing for facts, for factual purposes that that woman didn't remember interacting with her. Is why I said what I said. After learning that, if you're still disappointed in me, I would kindly encourage you to unfollow me because- I love this. This is her like get out of jail free card. Like, if you don't like what I'm doing, just unfollow me. 
I've got 2 million followers on here. I will not miss you. Don't get me wrong. If people are interacting with my content and it's not hitting whatever note it needs to hit with them, I would much rather prefer they stop interacting with it than aggravate themselves and me at the same time. Because, like, I feel like it's unproductive. But for me to sit here and be like, if you don't like the fact that my hair is red, you should just unsubscribe from me. You know, it's just... How egotistical. I don't need you. Kind of you do, though, Anna. This is, this is your job. Unlike me and a lot of people that react to you, this is what you do for a living. You do need these subscribers. Like, that's just a bad idea. It's a bad business. It's bad business. Because I am proudly setting my boundaries this year these are not boundaries whatever the hell she thinks she did these are not boundaries this woman did nothing to overstep boundaries with anna and that woman crossed those boundaries once and i wasn't about to give her the opportunity to cross them again there were no boundaries for this woman to cross anna is wrong how could this woman cross boundaries if she wasn't even aware that they were there. That's the problem. Anna just assumes that everybody knows what her boundaries are because she's Anna and you should all just know. And therefore, if you do anything she doesn't like, that's crossing Anna's boundaries. Anna's boundaries are, she is always right. She is always the victim. She knows everything. You must worship her as the true goddess that she is. And to do otherwise is crossing her boundaries. So just unfollow her. I, I would really like to see what she would do if she got a huge uh, unfollow hit. Like, I think she'd go into panic mode. Maybe that's part of the problem. Like, she is not doing well. And she's in some kind of spiral. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe she's starting to take, like, view hits or something and she's noticing it. And instead of, like, fixing the problem, she's doubling down on it. I come to the trail for two reasons, to feel the strength of my body and to find peace. And I am not about to let somebody take that away from my active lifestyle. Those things are important to me. Notice the constant amount of eye contact. Like she's not looking at the viewer. She's looking up at the, vit at the camera. She's not checking herself to make sure she's making the right face because right now this is Anna. This is, this is Anna's arrogance. This is Anna's self-assuredness. This, this is Anna. She doesn't have to fake this. This is natural for her. So she doesn't have to look away from the camera. She can maintain that uncomfortable eye contact. She's not lying. At least it, as far as she's concerned, she's not lying. This is not being made up. She is, she really does not care if you don't follow her. She, she does not view the loss of subscribers as any kind of punishment. It, it would, it, it, she doesn't see the value. She doesn't see the value in her audience, so it doesn't bother her if you unfollow. And I didn't do it in a way where I made fun of her. I didn't do it in a way where I hurt her. And see, notice the difference. I didn't do it in a way... That was mean. You totally did it in a way that was mean, even by your own accounting. I didn't do it in a way that embarrassed her. How was that not embarrassing? Like, if you're embarrassed because she said, good job getting out there, how is she not embarrassed by you going, do you know me? Because you're talking to me like someone who knows me. That's embarrassing. People don't want that kind of confrontation in real life. Like, that's weird. You don't want anything to do with that afterwards. So you did both of the things that you're claiming you didn't do. So either you're lying and you were looking away from the camera when you said both of those. So I'm going to guess you were lying because you were also in your deceptive zone. Or you are so oblivious to other people that you have no concept of how what you do inter affects other people. And yet you're bitching about this woman 
doing something that affected you. So it's a one-way street. It only it only matters if it affects Anna. But I did do it in a way to remind her that we had already had a conversation and it had already made me feel uncomfortable. You literally didn't do any of that. There was nothing in that interaction that you made that you said in the car that would have jog that woman's memory that you guys had already had a conversation assuming she actually forgot who you were which i doubt and that i had no need or want to have that conversation again and there is in my mind nothing wrong with that i believe that now everything is based on opinion so if you disagree that's super cool i'm just not the creator for you Be notice again when she says this where is she She's okay. Hang on. I'm just not the creator for you. Okay. This is her patronizing. I don't know how to describe this face because I don't really know how to describe the 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 thing that goes through it. But you see Amber do it all the time. And how is it? It goes um. Trump does it too. It goes. It's like his, I don't give a shit. You're stupid. Patronizing face, maybe? Let's see. Okay, so this is her saying that's super cool. Now watch the expression we meld into here. This is, I'm... Snarl. We're starting the snarl right here. She's got the going on. Her... Foreheads, her eyebrows are starting to draw down, much more pronounced. So much teeth. It's not as bad as it was in the car. I will give it that. Like that, that level of teethy, snarly aggression, that was a lot. But that snarl and that little bit of a dip, I'm not the creator for you. I mean, I'm over-exaggerating, but that's what was going on there. This, this is how I live and I have no regrets for what I did. So as of right now, this is the conclusion of the, the jogging trail shame saga. Anna doesn't care if you unsubscribe from her. She's cool. She's perfect. Everything she did was exactly what should have been done. She has no regrets and there's nothing you can say that's going to convince her otherwise. So shove off if you don't like it. She does that a lot. How does she have so many subscribers? Anyway, what we watched um, was Anna going from a very short story of hey this woman came up to me on the trail and said good job getting out there and i had a breakdown because i'm delicate we went from that to her saying what you should have done on the trail was come up to me bowed down kissed the dirt that my foot had touched and told me what a wonderful goddess i am and how you're so happy that i'm online for you to worship me then we moved on to a week later, she saw the same woman and decided to verbally accost the woman because she still felt like she had been belittled by this peasant. And then we get to Anna defending how she spoke to the woman and all of her actions leading up to this moment and how Anna is perfect. She will not back down. And if you don't like it, there's the door. That's kind of the sequence of events in a very, very sarcastic way of putting it keeping in mind Anna doesn't seem to see it that way also because she keeps altering the story every time she tells it it's not like a oh I just remembered she was wearing a blue coat kind of a thing it's a whole ass conversation that I didn't mention the first time kind of a thing like you are making this up you are making up I think I personally think she made up the initial encounter I think she made up the second counter encounter on the and i think she definitely embellished the story because it was made up anyway uh there at the end in the orange jacket here so what i as i said what i think is really going on here is i think there's someone jogging on the trail that anna is jealous of or anna is envious of for some reason and whatever reason it doesn't really matter anna's just clearly anna 
clearly feels inferior to this person and has created this scenario in her head of what she would do or what she would say if this woman ever dared approach her. And since she decided to share it as a real story on the internet, she had to then defend it because she doesn't look good in any of these tellings. There's as many people who have tried to defend Anna in my comments sections, and there has not been a lot. And again, I'm a reaction channel. I don't expect there to be a lot of people in my comments section who are trying to defend Anna because that's just not how this kind of stuff works. But what I'm also not seeing is a lot of people trying to defend Anna in her own comment sections. And I find that kind of telling. When I originally started looking at Anna's comments back around the Target era, the Target incident, she, her comments were kind of 50-50. People were yas queening her and people were also like, hey, what you did is awful. Why did you do that? You should apologize. It was kind of a 50-50 mix. Now when I look at her comment section, I see, I see people saying, you're cool, you're wonderful, whatever, you, you shit rainbows. But I also see a lot of people who are like, up until this point, why haven't you apologized for Target? Um, you know, don't, why, why are you so mean kind of things, things like that. I see people saying ruder things as well, which I'm sure has always been. All right. But the problem is, is what I'm seeing is a shift away from people saying nice things to people saying critical nasty things. Her comment section is nowhere near as bad as Amber Lynn's, and I pray it never gets that bad, but her comment section is not a warm, fuzzy, safe zone for her anymore either. Um, like I said, the last video that she put up, uh, the last short that I watched that she put up was her doing those squats. It's not the last one she's posted, it's the last one I watched. The comment section for that was just, there were people in Russian and Spanish telling her that her form was bad and she needed to correct it or she was going to hurt herself. I do also think there was someone in Korean who said, your form is bad, you're going to hurt yourself. It, variations of that exact statement. So not only is she getting people in English telling her, fix your shit, you're gonna hurt yourself. There's people from other countries who are compelled to tell her that her form is going to get her hurt. Like, it's just, how much more of a sign do you need? Apparently, like, all of them. But that's the thing. These people aren't being mean. Like, none of the comments that I read telling her to improve her form were mean. But they are critical. They are telling her a hard truth that she doesn't want to hear. And that was the majority of comments. There were people in the comment section who were like, oh my God, you're so awesome. I hope to be like you someday. I can't believe you did a hundred squats. You go, you rock. You know, there were still people saying those things, but for every one of those, there were probably like three people going, stop it. You're going to hurt yourself, you know, kind of a thing. So I'm just noticing a huge shift in the way people are interacting with Anna and the comments that Anna's getting on her videos and Anna just going over her social media and stuff. Anna seems to be one of these people that like she she'll quit if it gets too hard kind of a thing. And that's, you know, fine. If you can't, if you can't handle it, you got to do what's right for you. You got to do the healthy thing. And if that means that she has to step away and like leave YouTube or something like that, that's what she's got to do. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Anna, I don't dislike Anna. I, I'm actually mildly concerned because like I said, she seems to be on some kind of downward spiral and she's mentioned that she's got something going on in her, in the background that's, that's hitting her negatively. And like, I have sympathy for that. I don't have any reason not to be sympathetic. Okay, she was bitchy to somebody on the jogging trail. I, I honestly don't care. I still think she's not that bad of a person and I still am kind of concerned about her mental state, which her mental and emotional state, which to me clearly seem to be shifting in a negative way. 
And this kind of stuff here is not going to help. Even with it vanishing, obviously it's being recorded. You know, these came from Sam at Every Sizes video. I've recorded them. The, the cynical guy has reacted to all of these videos. There are other people who have reacted to all of these videos. They're out there. They're permanent. 24 hours is not enough time to make them go away. Okay. These are things that Anna should just not be posting. And she doesn't seem to be able to not do that. But she also can't take the negative responses. And I think it's affecting her. I'm not going to sit here and be like, y'all should be nicer to Anna because there's actually this little tiny part of me that wants to go onto all of her videos where she's exercising and go, good job getting out there on every single one of her videos because I, I am petty. <laughs> it's just like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But I do think it would be funny. Um, don't do it. I'm very serious about that. But it's that kind of shit. Like, I'm thinking about it. Somewhere someone out there is going to act on it. You know, that kind of a thing. And it's just kind of... I feel bad. Because I can see... I can see what's going to happen. It's like I have future sight. I can see what's going to happen to Anna. Because it's... She's going down kind of the same trail that Amber, goes, Amber went down. And that not nearly anywhere near as bad as amber or foodie but it's the same kind of spiral and she's not pulling out of it and i'm just really concerned that her audience is going to turn very toxic on her and she's not going to know how to handle it because she clearly doesn't handle things well to begin with so anyway i guess that's my final thought on the matter i hate to be all doom and gloomy but anyway if you've made it this far go ahead and put a what haven't we used in a while all right there we go. Let's do that. Go ahead and put down in the comment section a red X or the, the big emoji X if you doubt this story being real. Or put a green check. I think there's a green check in the comment section if you think this is a true story. Um, so there you go. Vote via emoji. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Uh, I know a lot of you are watching the other reactors as well. So tie all of this together i don't personally plan on making another video about this unless anna puts something else up which i don't think she will i hope she doesn't it's not gonna end well so hopefully this is the last time i'm going to be talking about this in such depth on this channel i'm sure we'll mention it from time to time but right so don't forget red x to doubt green check to believe and I just want to say thank you again to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank you to my subscribers. We are almost a four, we are 500 away from 4,000 and well, close to 5,000, 500 away from 4,000. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my members. You rock. Thank you to everybody who's going to give this a thumbs up. And uh, thank you to everyone who's going to subscribe because if you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe. And anyway, now I will see everyone in the next one. Bye. This is my outro music. You can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing. This is my outro music. Thank you for watching. See you next time.